What's up, YouTube? We're back with another productivity hack. I'm Brandon, and today we're giving you a free tool powered by artificial intelligence that will help automate some of the more tedious aspects of creating content, specifically related to copywriting. So coming up with a blog title or a social post, these are things I don't really enjoy doing that much. And I say they're tedious because generally you need to come up with multiple ideas for a single blog title before you have something that's compelling enough that people would actually want to click on it. And so that's where we're hoping this AI powered spreadsheet will save you a little bit of time and mental energy. Up at the top, we have a few fields to fill out in order to tell the AI what we're looking for as far as the response. The most important of which is going to be our text prompt here, which describes the topic we want to discuss. And in this case, we want to uh, generate some headlines about electric vehicle cost savings. The fields to the right will help modify the results that we get back. So how many we're looking for, for instance, how many results, what the word count per result is, things like that. So since we have everything filled out appropriately, we can send this over to the AI by clicking this green button here. And if we've done this correctly, then the results we get back can be shockingly good. And the reason they're shockingly good often is because we're using the most advanced AI on the market for this purpose is the GPT-3 API, which is created by OpenAI. They've recently made their service available to the wider public so anybody can sign up without a credit card, which is pretty cool. So let's take a look at a couple of our responses. So right off the top, new study shows that electric vehicles cost less to operate than gas cars. That's pretty cool because it's on topic and it adds a little bit of authority by stating that there's a study behind it. Then we have one down here, electric vehicles could save drivers $8,000 a year. So that's impressive for a couple of different reasons. It's not only on topic, but it's actually using some real data in there, which is pretty amazing. I'd want to double check that just to make sure it's accurate, but these are right in line with the prompt that we offered. So I'm happy with the results. As you can see, this is a very powerful and capable service. I'm going to spend the rest of this video showing you how to set this spreadsheet up for yourself very quickly so you can start using it on your own projects. If you stick around to the end, I'll even offer a few different suggestions on how you can generate better responses from the AI. As always, I'm leaving a link in the description below to the spreadsheet and all the resources that you'll need to get it up and running. I hope you're excited to get started because we're going to dive right in. Okay, so here we are in the spreadsheet that you will get by following the link below. And right now we're logged in with a different account. So we only have view only access, which is exactly what you're going to see. So we need to follow a few quick and easy steps in order to get this up and running. The first is to create a copy of the spreadsheet. So we actually have ownership over it. So we'll go to file, make a copy. And there's going to be a flag down here that there's an app script file associated with this document. As always, I recommend checking out any app script files anytime you're copying something over. You can do that by clicking this link right here and check it out. But I already know what's happening behind the scenes. So I'm going to click make a copy. And once we jump into the spreadsheet that we actually have ownership over, there's a couple more things we need to do. The first is go to results tab. Then we need to run the script by clicking the green button here, generate ideas. And we'll get a flag that the script is running up above. And once that happens, we're going to be prompted to provide some permissions or authorization so that the script has access to the resources it needs in order to run. So we'll click continue on authorization. We will click on the account that we're logged in with. And then we can see the permissions it's asking for. So it needs access to the spreadsheet and to connect to external services, which is what we should expect. I'll click allow. And we're now good to go. So there's one more step we need to do, which is creating an account with OpenAI. So we can do that by going to overview. And there's a link right here to create an account. So I'll click on that. And then just follow the sign up process up in the top right hand corner. You might want to pause the video here because I've already created an account. So I'm not going to go through those steps. But once you do, you can resume the video right here. I'll click login, login with my account. And then once we see the dashboard here, we need to go to the top right hand corner, click on the drop down, and then go to view API keys. And then we want to copy the API key right here. So we'll click on copy. You want to keep this secret because this is kind of like your password and I wouldn't show it to anyone. Otherwise, they're going to have access to make requests on your behalf and that could cost you money. So keep this a secret. Only you should have it. I'm only showing it here because this will be deleted by the time the video is posted. So we'll go back to our spreadsheet now and then go to extensions, app script. And then we need to find the settings page over on the left hand side. And then in the API section here, there's a key. And right now there's a placeholder. So we just need to copy our API key in between the quotes, save the file. And we are now ready to send our requests to OpenAI and get our responses back. So we can test that out by going back to our spreadsheet, going to results, and then sending the example prompt here. And this should run successfully. Perfect.
Okay. So there's a few things that you're going to want to know about how this spreadsheet works, just so there's no surprises or questions. The first is that there's an estimated tokens here below the green button that you may have noticed. And that is because every time we send something to OpenAI, it costs us tokens. And when we sign up for a free account, they give us a certain amount of tokens, which based on our calculations is 900,000. So you can see that the first test request that we sent was 68 tokens, and that is deducted from our total. And that's how many free tokens we have left. And we try to keep track of this within the spreadsheet, but to get a more detailed understanding of how many tokens you have left, you can log into OpenAI and they keep track of all that. But every time we type in something in the prompt here, so this is a prompt, we'll notice that there are now four tokens associated with this. And if we fill in the other two uh, fields here that are associated with the tokens, so let's say we want 10 results, 10 words each, we'll see that it is 138 tokens estimated. This is generally calculated to be a little higher than what it actually costs. So it should cost less than this, but it's generally pretty close. Uh, they don't provide exact guidelines on how to calculate this. So we had to use their general guidelines in understanding how much each request is going to be worth. So that is one thing to keep in mind. The next thing to keep in mind is every time we generate ideas, your previous ideas will be removed. They will be cleared from this spreadsheet and replaced with the new results. And if we want to save these, I would recommend creating another tab or another document and then copying these over and saving them there just so you don't lose them. The last thing to understand about this is that when we click on generate ideas, do not click it more than once. Wait for that green running script flag to show up because if you click it more than once, it might run more than once and then ultimately cost us more tokens than we were expecting. So we don't want that. So just make sure to click it once. If nothing happens after a while, click it again, but make sure that you don't send multiple requests. Lastly, for my three tips on generating better responses from the AI, the first thing I noticed is that when I sent a text prompt that was too specific, I ended up getting duplicate responses. And I'm assuming that's because the algorithm had less wiggle room on creating variability in the idea. And so I got a lot better results when I created text prompts that were open-ended and more ambiguous. So instead of saying something like, write a tweet from Elon Musk about AI's future impact on humanity, say something like, write a tweet on AI and humanity, or write a tweet on AI in general. And you'll end up getting a lot better responses that way. I'm assuming because there's more variability that the algorithm has to work with. Next, I got a lot better responses as well when I use simpler words. So don't use $1 words or $2 words or whatever the saying is, try to keep your syllable count below two, I would say one to two and use common words. And it, I found that the responses I got back were a lot more on topic. When I used larger words, the responses ended up being more off topic and kind of just not related to the prompt almost. So that is something to keep in mind as well. And then lastly, if you want to ask the AI questions about something and get a direct answer back, I found that if you ask it a question, it doesn't provide as good of an answer as if you form that question in the form of a statement. So instead of asking, what is the capital of California? Say something like the capital of California is, and you'll end up getting a lot better response that way. I'm assuming it's because it's kind of like a text completion sort of algorithm. So it tends to work better as if you're typing it as a sentence ultimately. And lastly, as kind of a bonus tip, if you're looking for a little bit more variability and you have a text prompt that's working, but you just want to kind of get as much out of it as you can, try switching the words around and maybe changing the words up a little bit, and you'll end up getting a lot different responses than you had with the original prompt. So I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope you get a ton of value out of this spreadsheet. If you do, please leave a like on this video and subscribe for more content like this.